Hello everyone, hope you are all doing good. In this video, we are going to discuss about the normal sexual development. So, for the development of sex, there are so many embryological changes that will be happening. But before that, you have to understand that agenda is destined by so many factors okay so we have three types of gender destination so first one is it can be a genetic sex for example that's what we say it as male has a 46 xy chromosomes and female has 46 xx chromosomes and next one is gonadal sex that means the male gonads are the testis and the female gonads or the ovaries right yes next one is phenotypic sex phenotypic sex means the external appearance of genitalia okay external appearance of genitalia that includes secondary sexual characters Okay, so this is the gender identity what we generally know, right? Yes. Now, let's see how this gonadal sex development happens during embryo. That is what is going to decide about the phenotypic sex also. Okay, so gonadal sex development in embryo. So, the development of male gonads happen much earlier when compared to the female gonads. Okay, so generally the gonads or bipotential gonads, that is, they have the capacity to develop into either male or female till eight to nine weeks, or say eight to ten weeks, as some book tells, of embryonic life. After this, what happens means if the male Y chromosomes. Okay, so the sex chromosomes that is present in the male, which contains the Y chromosome, and then the SRY gene on the Y chromosome that is located on the sex determining region. Okay, so this is present on the short arm of chromosome. X. Okay, so this happens, it will be followed by the upregulations of SOX9 and FGF9. Okay, so these are some genes that are responsible for the male gonadal differentiation. So this will lead to the undifferentiated or the bipotential gonad to develop into testis. Clear? Now, what happens in the female fetus? In the female fetus, we know there are no Y chromosomes as well as there is no SRY gene also. So, here there is upregulation of genes as well, but the genes are different. Okay, so there is upregulation of WNT4 or RP or SPOA. Okay, so these two genes are upregulated, so that will be resulting in the differentiation of the undifferentiated gonad into ovary okay so this will be happening between 8 to 10 weeks anyhow clear right then you have to know about the phenotypic sex phenotypic sex is mostly determined by the internal genital organs that means both mullerian and wolfian ducts or present in an embryo initially, okay, or seen in an embryo initially, and after that 
suppose if the fetus is going to be xy type then the gonads are testis the testis will have two types of cells as we know right that is leydig cells and setole cells so this leydig cells is going to produce the hormone testosterone around 8 weeks of gestational life and the setole cells the same way is going to produce the hormone antimullerian hormone by 7 weeks of gestational life clear now what is the work of this amh amh is going to cause regression of the mullerian ducts whereas testosterone is going to cause yes the development of the wolfian duct okay so what is wolfian duct is going to do from the wolfian duct only the most of the internal genitalia in a female develops for example your seminal vesicles epididymis ejaculatory ducts as well as vas deferens clear so this is nothing but seed okay so seminal vesicles epididymis ejaculatory ducts and then vas deferens like this you can remember right fine and then where is the external genitalia of the male is going to develop so the external genitalia in a male develops due to a hormone called dihydrotestosterone okay so it is dihydrotestosterone so from where we get this dihydrotestosterone it is derived from testosterone by the action of the enzyme pi alpha reductase clear so when this happening how the changes are going to take place there you will have three important components of the bipotential gonad say genital swellings genital folds and genital tubercle so in a male these are going to develop into the scrotum penile urethra and tubercle means it is glans penis clear right the same way so we have already seen the mullerian duct is going to regress in a male but even then some of the remnants of the mullerian duct can be present okay so what are the mullerian duct remnants that are seen in a male those include appendix of testis and then prostatic uricolas clear so this is all about the development of male we have seen how the external genitalia internal genitalia develops and what are the hormones responsible for it and what are the genes and chromosomes responsible for it right next one we'll see the development of female so in female the chromosome is xx so what are the gonads going to be yes the gonads are going to be the ovaries so if ovaries are present definitely it is the mullerian duct that is going to grow why because you have to understand a fact that when ovaries are present we have no sertoli or leydig cells right also there is no testosterone hormone as well as there is no dihydrotestosterone hormone and there is no anti mullerian hormone when anti mullerian hormone is not present mullerian duct is going to develop okay yes the next one 
This Mullerian duct is going to develop into uterus, cervix, and fallopian tube. As we have seen, the components of the bipotential gonad is now going to develop into the female external genitalia. Okay. So, here what's going to happen? The genital swellings are going to develop into the labia majora. Okay. Genital folds are going to develop into the labia minora and genital tubercle is going to develop into the clitoris. Clear? You have to understand the fact that sex determination is possible by ultrasonogram and it can be done at the earliest at 10 weeks and definitely will be able to define the sex of the fetus by 14 weeks okay between 10 to 14 weeks definitely will be able to do okay now let me tell you about the sex differentiation now okay to summarize so how the sex differentiation is going to happen first we have an undifferentiated gonad or a bipotential gonad so from that depending upon the chromosome present say x y or x x the changes will happen if x y is present then the gonad is going to be testis in the testis we have what cells yes we have the septoli cells and leydig cells now, septoli cells is going to produce anti-mullerian hormone, leydig cells will be producing testosterone. So, mullerian duct regresses and wolfian duct grows. Clear? Also, the testosterone will be converted into dihydrotestosterone by the enzyme phi alpha reductase and this is responsible for the development of internal genitalia of the male. The same way in females what is going to happen? In the females when the genetic sex is XX then the gonads are going to be ovaries and from the ovaries we do not get antimullerian hormone or testosterone. So, this will lead to the development of female genital tract or female external genitalia. Clear? So, this is how the normal development happens, right? So, I will give you one table here. So, this table is going to summarize what are the embryonic structure present and what are they going to develop in a male and female respectively okay so we all know in a the gonad in a female is ovary the gonad in a male is testis okay the same way the cortex in male consists of seminiferous tubules whereas in a female it consists of ovarian follicles the medulla consists of free ovary and a, in a male the corresponding structure is free testis Gubernoculum gives rise to ovarian and round ligament structures in a female, whereas in male it is going to be gubernoculum itself. Okay. The mesonephric tubules in a female are going to develop into the epiphoron and paraphoron, whereas in a male it is going to be duct ductuli efferentus. Okay. Then mesonephric duct develops into the appendix of vesticulizer, duct of epiphoron, and duct of Gartner in case of females, whereas in males it is going to be the appendix of testis, ductal epididymis, ductal difference ejaculatory duct and seminal vesicles right that is seed structures paramesonephric duct in a female is going to develop into the hydrated of morgagni uterine tube as well as uterus whereas in a male it is going to develop into the appendix of testis right and the urogenital sinus in a female is going to give rise to the 
urethra, vagina, urethral, paraurethral and greater vestibular glands. Whereas in male, it is going to develop into the urethra, prostatic utricle, prostate and bulbo urethral glands. Sinus tubercle in a female develops into the hymen, whereas in a male, it is going to develop into the seminal colliculus. The phallus develops into clitoris in case of females, whereas in case of males, it is going to be the penis. Urogenital folds in a female develops into labios, labia minora, whereas in a male, it is going to develop into the ventral aspect of penis. Labioscrotal swellings in a female develops into the labia majora, whereas in case of male, it is going to develop into the scrotum. Okay, so this is all about the normal sexual development. Yes. So with this we will be completing this topic until we meet in the next topic. Take care, happy learning, keep going and bye bye.